Hey folks, I'm Gene Delasala with Audioholics. And today I would like to give you an update on my BMW M240i car stereo install. It's been a long time since I've um, touched on this topic. I went through a lot of hurdles, kind of getting all the system put together, tuned up and, and functioning. So I'm gonna do two videos. I'm gonna do one today on the actual install process and all the help I got from our friends at Maximum AV. And then I actually have a very special video to follow up um, afterwards. I actually went to JL Audio in Miami, Miramar, Florida, and they helped me professionally tune the system. So we're gonna have two phases here. So let's focus today on the actual install. And what I wanted to do is I wanted to tell you a little bit about this company that, that helped me achieve uh, what I was doing here. So let me just share this with you. So Maximum AV, they're in Tampa, Florida. And I've always driven by them off of Dale Mabry, and I never kind of looked at them, never stepped in. I just thought they were only car audio. But it turns out these guys are, re are the real deal for home audio as well. Home theater, custom integration, home automation. These guys are really where it's at. Um, I've spoken to many of the people there. They really know they have specialties in car audio as well as home audio. And if I show you some, some of the images here, I wanted to share with you. So this is what this front of their store looks like. And they do some high-end installs in cars too. I mean, they, yeah, they did my BMW and I was worried about leaving a $55,000 car off with a company that I didn't know. And then they're showing me all these installs they did in like Lamborghinis, Bentleys. Yeah, and they did some really clean work here. This is just an example I found off their Facebook. And of course it attracts the women too. So you know that's a good thing when you got the women there as well and there's a nice Ferrari. Um, so, you know, I walked into their store, I took a look at their theater, uh, setups. They have some really nice equipment, really clean rack installs here. Good wire management. You can see that here. Um, this is some good stuff here. I love this kind of stuff. Look at that install. I mean, that's just amazing. The kind of work that they do. So, um, and they carry all the major brands. They have paradigm revel, um, Macintosh. B&W, uh, Golden Ear, they've got a lot of different brands. They also do, for home automation, they do Savant and Control 4. And of course, you know, we're, uh, we're working with Control 4 right now on a project in my house. So I wanted to just go over all the stuff they did in my car. And you can see this wiring harness here. It's kind of a mess to deal with. They had to take a lot of stuff apart in my trunk. They had to go through, they had to basically control, um, to install a control wire between the DSP that was being installed in the trunk, the JL Audio TWK88 DSP, and then dr bring that wire all the way to the front on my, on my uh, front dash. So that way I could control the different DSP tunes and also have a USB interface to the DSP to change my EQ settings when I wanted to. So I just wanted to show you a couple of, of images I took from um, the install that they did for me. And look at all this uh, management in the trunk. There's a lot of stuff going on in these cars, especially the BMWs. They put the battery in the back for better weight distribution and all the power management's done actually in the trunk. So that's pretty cool. So this is the stock amp that was in my system. Now, my BMW M235i, I had the Harman system in it. After that car got crashed by a um, texting driver, I traded it in and I got the M240i and I figured why waste my time spending $800 on the upgrade for getting the um, Harman system when I knew I was gonna do this. Now, if you're not gonna do a, a, an install upgrade into your two series in terms of audio components, the Harman system is worth the $800 upgrade because the hi-fi system that comes standard in this car is atrocious. It is non-listenable in my opinion. It's just really nasty sounding. And you can see they don't give you much power here. This little amp is a six channel amplifier that powers the entire car. And it's just not adequate. It's really not guys. So I wanted to show you um, what that's been replaced with. Again, this is the stock amp as well. This is the JL audio amp that I got in. This is the six channel amp. I think it's 75 times six at four ohms and uh, you could bridge it as well this thing has got some 
real balls to it. I've been really testing this out for a few months and I'm really impressed by how much power I'm getting out of this system. And I didn't even have to put a big capacitor bank on the battery. I mean, it's a class D, it's very efficient. And here's all the controls on it. We flipped it over and set it all up, you know, bypassing the EQ and base management because we're using the TWK88 DSP. Now, incidentally, JL Audio has a new product out now, and I'll be talking about it in another video where it combines the DSP with the amplifier. So you get one box for both. So if you're looking to do um, some type of upgrade in the near future, that's the kind of thing I would be looking at. Unfortunately, I got this stuff about a year and a half ago before that other product existed. But this is still great regardless. You can see the wiring here. I mean, they just did a really clean job, maximum AV. Look at that. There's the DSP, all the RCAs. And that's the cool thing about the BMW system. Even though the stock system's terrible, the preamp outputs on the head unit are really strong. I think you get like a good seven volts RMS clean output. And it's pretty flat too. So you don't have to worry about um, the EQ curve for the original speakers being in the head unit. It's actually was in the, the amplifier that we pulled out. So we're doing all the DSP tuning in this magic little black box here. And then I also, while I had the trunk open, I wanted them to put some sound foam in there to kind of deaden it up a little bit. The, the M240, let me just tell you, they, they really quieted that car up from the prior model, the M235i. Having driven both, my 240, just standard, it sounds more like a Lexus inside the cabin when you're driving than the 235 did. It's that quiet. But you know, I always want to lower the noise floor as much as I can. So they were nice enough to put some of the sound uh, deadening mat inside the uh, panels. You can see here. Every little bit helps. So there's no mechanical vibrations when I'm driving and stuff like that. It's great. So the first thing we did um, was we took out the stock drivers, which were really, really bad. And we put in these Morels. And this is a component speaker. So it's got the tweeter built into it. If I showed you the stock drivers, you would laugh. They're just plastic woofers and wizard cones on them they're just nasty in fact i'll throw a couple of pictures on so you can take a look at the before and after you'd be surprised and i think it's in the last video i did as well so this little hole here is this if you had the Harman system you would have the woofer and you would have the tweeter i think that's what that cutout is we're not using that we have the tweeter built in here and that's what the grill put back on now this is the door components, the front components. These are Morel as well. And you can see one thing I like about this driver is it has a bigger surface area than the, than the stock driver that was there. Um, so you get a little bit more cone area, a little bit more sensitivity. There's a passive crossover that they put on the door. I don't have a picture over here, but they bolted it on the door and it's very secure. It's a really nice high fidelity crossover, all air core inductors and uh, poly caps. It's just, it's like having a home speaker in your car basically. And then I had the guys at um, Music Car over in Oregon um, design the mold, put the tweeter in the Harman molds. I had to get the Harman molds for the car because the stock system doesn't have a tweeter. It's so ridiculous, a $53,000 car. If you don't order the upgraded audio system, you get a wizard cone special and you don't get a dedicated tweeter. I think it's ridiculous. I hope BMW changes their mindset in the future because they're falling behind in terms of car audio in their cars. Not in terms of driver dynamics, though. This is, let me tell you, not to get off topic, but it's one of the best cars I've ever driven, and I've driven lots of cars, and I just love the way this uh, 240 drives. That's why I did this audio system. I knew I was going to keep the car for a long time, and I wanted to have good sound in it. So uh, when the guys at Maximum AV did the install, they originally went with the calibration file that the guys at Music Car in Oregon set up, but it just, it didn't sound right. I'm sorry to say, um, I don't think it's viable to do a remote tuning. I think there's too many things that can go wrong. So I, I gave it a listen and it just did not sound right. So I asked the guys at Maximum AV at least to try to do what they could with their real-time analyzers. And just to get the system sounding decent. That way when I took it home, I could play around with the DSP. And you guys know I always like to screw around with this stuff. And I would spend time just doing that. And I'm gonna show you how to do that as well. So this is just a basic response curves. And they have a, a true RTA display as well that they, um, they use. And they use up to, I think they use 112th octave resolution to look at the before and after measurements. 
And then this is the uh, DSP, the TWK88 display. I'm gonna go over this with you in a little bit, but this is from their um, area when they were tuning it and they were doing all their EQ and their timing and all that stuff. And you know, the various EQs are for each speaker. So you got independent EQs for each speaker, parametric, fully adjustable frequency, Q and gain. You got all your uh, base management here. You can adjust the crossover frequency, the slope, and the type of filter it is. And it's and here's your delays and here's your outputs. It's just amazing what this DSP can do. Really wish we had more stuff like this um, in home theater. I wish uh, AV receivers were sometimes this flexible. It's kind of hard to get that. So while we're talking about that, let me show you the TWK uh, interface here. Let me get this open here. So when you pull this up, um, you download the software from JL Audio's website and you interface with USB between the TWK88 and your computer, your laptop, and you have different tune files. Like I have, because I'm not having a center channel in my car anymore, I pulled that out. The best, the only way you can get a good phantom image is to have proper time alignment from where you're sitting without the center channel. Now, if you can have a center channel in your car, it's advantageous. But the way BMW was doing it in the two series was not very advantageous because all they were doing was left plus right in the center. They weren't doing any post-processing and they weren't even doing level control. It was the same loudness as the left uh, and right front speakers. So what that did was it kind of collapsed the stereo sound stage and it made everything sound like it was coming from the center. It did that for every seat. I mean, it did accomplish that but you didn't get good imaging and I, you didn't get good sound staging like that. And I didn't like it really kind of annoyed me that they didn't offer the ability to at least lower the level because if you jump up to a four series BMW and you get the Harman system with logic seven, it's a game changer. Logic seven really makes a huge difference in that car. They have similar components. It's just that they don't have the logic seven turned on. So you're just getting a dumb left plus right into the center channel without any level control. So my solution here was to just disconnect the center and have multiple tune files, <clears throat> excuse me, multiple tunings based on who's really listening in the car. So in my case, I had a GDS all would be a four channel stereo. So if I have my kids in the back seat and my wife in the passenger seat, I would switch to the green tune and you press the button on the DSP uh, module that you put on your dash. And then I have the GDS driver timed, which is my seat. So if nobody else is in the car, if nobody else cares, everything is time aligned to my seat. So I get that good phantom image coming from the center. And then I have the passenger. So if my wife is doing any critical listening, which is rare to be honest with you, um, she just likes background music most of the time. I switch to that setting for her. So here's all your channel labels, front, left, right, center. And if you want to do a left, minus right for the surrounds. You basically do the left minus right subtraction here. I'm gonna talk about that a little more in the next video. In this setup, I did four channel stereo for every mode, and I'll tell you why in a minute. But here's where you assign your different um, speaker configurations. And then the tune is where the cool stuff is. So EQ1 is for the front left channel, EQ2 is for the front right channel. I screwed around with this and I, I did everything. I took what Maximum AV did as a starting point and I made some tweaks to it. I didn't actually pull any measurements. I wanted to see how good I could get the system sounding just by ear without pulling any measurements. And the other thing too is the BMW doesn't have a three and a half millimeter input. So the only way you could pull measurements in the car is to, is to put a test CD in and then run an RTA. I don't really like doing that. Unless you could get access directly to the DSP in the trunk, then you can't really do very precise measurements. When I went to JL Audio, they were able to do that. They had to rip up my trunk to do it. I didn't want to do that because I figured you guys wouldn't be doing that either. So I wanted to show you how good I can get just by doing a manual tune, just knowing some basics about audio and how to set up your stuff. So here um, you look at the EQ tunes. I just found I was getting good sound, just getting a notch at one kilohertz and then raising the treble up a little bit. And then the big thing is with these four inch drivers is to base manage them. So you could see here that I, I ran a crossover at 120 Hertz, 12 dB per octave. And that way all the base was not 
was being filtered out of the uh, speakers. The same thing with the rear speakers. I ran those a little higher because they had a little bit less of a cone area. And I just found it sounded better when I raised the crossover points as well. And then the underseat subwoofers, originally uh, the guys at Maximum set these at 80 hertz. And I heard a gap just by you know listening and it was really bothering me. So I played around with it and I found that if I crossed them over at 200 hertz, actually have them overlapping with the front speakers, I got the best integration. And oddly enough, um, I ran them, let me go to the actually tune. This is the driver time tune one, yeah. I oddly enough, I found out that I had to run these out of phase. And this is probably not the correct tune file that I used in my car. But when I ran these 180 degrees out of phase, I got rid of a resonance that was really bothering me. And the way to check that, if you're not going to measure, is put on music that you're very familiar with bass-wise and just take a listen. And when I put on stuff from Adele, like the song I Miss You, you could really hear what's going on with the, with the kick drum. And um, all I did was I swapped the phase of the so underseat woofers until I got it to sound right. And then I noticed once I put them on negative, uh, the boominess went away. And that's just in the tune I did. It all depends on your time alignment and your EQ. So I just gave an, a little bump in the lower frequencies. I got rid of a, a resonance I, that I heard by listening to music and doing some sweep tones in my car, just listening again, not actually measuring. And I did that here. Um, I got some really good results. The other interesting thing I would tell you is I detuned one of the surround speakers. Um, the left rear speaker was a little bit closer to the to the to my seat than the right one. But the odd thing about it is when I set them to the same distance, it anchored the center channel imaging for me. So I actually didn't put the app, the real measurements that I measured with a tape measure for those speakers. I was off by about, I would say six or seven inches and it just made everything come together really nice. And I got a really anchored center phantom image um, with this setup, with this time alignment that I chose. And let me tell you, the sound was a big improvement over the stock system. Um, I had really no complaints other than the fact that I just wanted to see how far we could take this by, by getting a professional tune, tune done. So if you have the time and you want to really play around and you, and you do a lot of listening with music and even sweep tones, you could tune your system really well uh, with this setup. And the DSP makes or breaks the system. It's even more important sometimes than the better components you put. Because I'm telling you, when you just left everything flat, the system didn't sound good. It wasn't until I got the time alignment, the base management done, that the magic just happened. And then I got it to the point where now I've got good base, those underseat woofers, the Gen Hertz. At first, I was skeptical about changing them because the stock woofers were about the same size. I didn't think I would get much benefit out of it. But once I changed those woofers and I put in real power with the JL amp, I started getting good bass extension in the car. And I'm not talking about like bassaholic extreme levels, like you're gonna rattle the car, but it's enough for most program material to have satisfactory full sound. And that's what I was really looking for. I wanted a system that sounds accurate, that's pleasing to listen to. Um, the four channel stereo mode, is good because it lets everyone in the car have a decent sound. It doesn't give you that anchored centered anymore, but it gives you a good enough sound for everybody. I really think that's the way to do it. I think you should have multiple tune settings, especially if you don't have a dedicated center channel. So that's it guys. I just wanted to tell you the update here, what I did um, using the tools I had at hand. I made a big improvement in sound, much better than the stock system. Um, I'm going to be telling you about what I did with JL Audio in my next video, and we'll go over that. So why don't you guys tell me what system you have in your car? If you're thinking about doing upgrades, what have you done to make your car system sound better? I'm kind of curious to see what kind of tweaks you did or what components you used. And guys, don't forget, we have a Patreon channel. If you want to suggest certain video topics for us to cover, or you want unique access, to things that we offer on Patreon that we don't offer on the editorial site. It's patreon.com slash audioholics. And my friends, until next time, keep listening.